Good morning. So how are data platforms, how are they different from the conventional digital platforms we've seen? Today I'll make a case that they are, data platforms are different, and that it leads to new questions, especially about understanding the openness of these platforms. So from uh, discussion on uh, the openness and uh, the differences between data platforms and conventional platforms, I'm going to draw some research questions uh, that we're studying in our group. And um, actually the presentation is based on a paper we're having next week at the first uh, ACM data economy workshop. So the theme is uh, at the bottom. So data platforms, what are they? For me, data platforms are platforms that facilitate businesses to exchange data. So I write here businesses, so I'm not really interested in the open data or government data. I'm interested in data that's somehow sensitive, confidential, competitive. Um, for these platforms, data is the main offering. So of course we know that all the platforms we use, we are producing data, and often the data is monetized. So I'm not talking about those platforms here, like social media platforms or, or the like. Also not on a data view on platforms like uh, Alimo, Alton, and Kalinikos would, uh, would say. My focus is much more narrow. This is about platforms that only um, offer data. Now this could range from full market uh, type of platforms, data marketplaces, where any provider and any consumer can match up. And the main issue is how to price data sets. Could also be more network or hierarchical way of data spaces where known partners exchange data with each other and share it. Um, definitely multi sided, as you see in the picture data consumers, so businesses looking for data, data providers, businesses owning data, perhaps some complementers that offer AI models, machine learning models, tools. Important if you read the EU policy documents and also the new data act coming from the EU. They focus a lot on this uh, data spaces, data platforms. They see it as a foundation for the data uh, economy. Um, not that that is per se a reason to study it, but yeah, it shows the relevance, at least in the policy discourse. And these platforms need to be open because we want to reduce the dependency on big tech's AI. So if we don't do anything on these data platforms, then yeah, we're bound to use data sets that are owned by the big tech and also the AI models that are owned by them. Also, we need to solve societal challenges. So often we need to have interactions between different verticals. This is we're starting a project on health and uh, food data. Um, there we need to connect and open up data platforms that get data from the patient records and data about food production. So openness is needed, but of course, stakeholders also want to limit openness. If you're an owner of a data set, you want to keep control over those data. You don't want to, to be on a fully open data market that anybody can access it. So you, have, so you need to retain some sovereignty over your data. If you're a data buyer, then you don't want to just collect any data set out there. You want to have some safe quality safeguards. That also calls for reducing the openness a bit. And if you're a platform owner, we know that from the platform literature, platform owners don't want full openness typically. They need some closeness to protect their business. So here we have the tension again between openness and control, as we've known it before in the literature. What I want to do in this short talk is to explore how data platforms are different and how that leads to new questions about platform openness. So I'll develop a research, research agenda, which I think is relevant for platform scholars who haven't looked much into data platforms as a new phenomenon. And also for data economy scholars, so the ACM folks where I'm presenting this paper next week, who mainly look at technology issues or pricing issues rather than uh, platform issues. And I think to crack these uh, questions, we actually need both. We need interdisciplinary work. So quickly background. So my, my reference in the literature uh, platform openness refers to restrict, uh, reducing the restrictions on using, developing, commercializing technology. It's a continuum, it's not binary, so it's open but not open, it's always something in between. And typically in the IS uh, field we study uh, openness in terms of tensions with control. 
how to open up platforms, two main ways, um, give up control, so fully go open source, uh, or open up what's called boundary resources. So resources that sit on the boundary of the platform, like APIs or development kits, and that are opened up. If you look to the empirical work on platform and platform openness, it's mainly on platform for software development, the iOS and Android, uh, about gaming platforms, different game consoles and generations, IoT platforms, perhaps payment platforms. So far, the data platforms that I talk about in this uh, in this presentation are not so much so. So if we know this, uh, we know what openness means. Openness means opening up resources in the platform, and we can do it by opening up boundary resources, so like APIs. What does it mean for data platforms? I think for data platforms, it works differently. So the object of openness is different. It's not the hardware and software modules that we open up, it's data. Or is it raw data, or is it more a data product? Maybe it's aggregated data. Or maybe it's not the data even, it's an analytics module that uses that data to get some meaningful answers. So I think the objects of openness are different for data platforms. Also the mechanisms to open them up could be different. So, could still be APIs that give you access to the data or to the analytics, sure. But it could also be a new paradigms where the algorithm goes to the data. Data stays at the data owner, but actually you open up the algorithm so you only get a meaningful answer. Privacy enhancing technologies could work in a similar way. So the objects of opening up a data platform could be different, and also the way to do it could be different. So, for instance, we are looking uh, in a study on privacy preserving technologies where we study how it would work if the data stays at the data owner, the data provider. And actually, the, all that the data platform does is do computations, and then only the answer is being shared with the data user. Now, this is a very different way of opening up a data platform. And in fact, you could say hey, it allows to keep control over the data while opening up. So this ancient tension that we see about control versus openness, maybe it could be solved with these new technologies. But this leads to new questions. It leads to questions about the users of data platforms. What kind of users would there be and what would be their incentives? Especially interesting, I think, these new mechanisms, uh, algorithm going to the data, can it break the tension of openness versus control? And what could be new tensions when we apply these mechanisms? And actually, those tensions uh, would lie mostly at the data user. So um, who is dependent on the algorithm, can't see the raw data, and has to trust that the algorithm is going to work. So I think that the, uh, there is a shift of the, the burden of uh, opening up from the provider to the user. What should be the data-related resources in data platforms? Should we really think about real data or aggregated data or modules, analytics? So what are these open data platforms going to look like? Second issue between conventional data platforms. In conventional platforms, we all know it, right? If we think about Android and iOS, there are two winners. Winners takes it all. And that's because of strong network effects, primarily, maybe also economies of scale, economies of scope. And these platforms become more useful if more uh, providers join, and therefore we only see two, maybe one or three platforms winning. And what we see a lot in conventional platforms are these cross-industry platforms. So the big tech providers, they span across many industries, and they're able to envelop from one industry to the next, taking their user base to the next industry. Data platforms, I think it's different. But today we see huge fragmentation, there's no clear winner in sight, maybe because it's early days, uh, data marketplaces are not widely used, uh, it could be. But we also see when we talk to data owners and data users, they want this to some extent. They want specialization, they want to share their data. If they're an agriculture firm, they want to share it with other agriculture firms, not with banks. That reduces the network effects, and that could mean that there's not a winner takes all, that this fragmentation will endure. And as a result, we see industry-specific data spaces, region-specific data markets, data markets in 
specific countries or cities. And this leads to problems, of course. If you want to find a good data set, it needs to be interoperable. So we see a huge push for interoperability, especially from the policymaker side today. Um, interoperability between data platforms. So here the EU is investing in Gaia X, uh, also other other initiatives there. Uh, hugely complicated, of course, because the metadata will be different. There's no semantic interoperability, uh, technical challenge, but also a business challenge, I think. It could also be that complementers would start to build bridges between these platforms in order to solve the fragmentation. One of the main things that we study in our group is uh, meta platforms. So meta platforms that sit on top of data platforms that resolve the fragmentation while allowing for data sovereignty. One of my PhD students, Antar Gamma Abbas, is working on this question, how to set this up. We also do studies on, um, yeah, how can you explain whether providers would be interesting interested to open their platforms to other platforms. Of course, it's much as a technical issue as it is a business issue. So this also leads to new questions. So what does it mean platform to platform openness in the context of data platforms? And why would data platform owners be interested to resolve this fragmentation and open up? How can we incentivize them to participate? How many data platforms do we need to interconnect to get network effects and to get a functioning market for data, as the EU policymaker wants? What would be business models for these meta platforms? And what are meta platforms? Because there's not much literature in the platforms literature about this concept. Is it different from forking or platform interoperability or bridging? So what are these meta platforms really? Then the third and final new set of questions is about the risk of opening up. Here the stuff, um, I think uh, on the top we know, platforms are generative, so if we open them up, we get risk. We get low quality apps, we can even have malicious apps, and that leads to problems, of course, for a platform owner. It's a reason to keep platforms somewhat closed or controlled. I think with data platforms, we're first of all in for a whole new set of risk. So reverse engineering, if you open up data from businesses, you might reverse engineer the business processes. You have leakage of strategic info, safety risks, you have privacy violation. A lot of the platform and data owners actually worry a lot about the uh, regulatory compliance, saying that there are so many uncertainties there. So there are new risks. I also think that uh, the generativity is one thing, but with data, it could be even worse. Data can be recontextualized, it can be recombined, and the data can be used by the data user outside the boundaries of the platform. You think about that, we use our uh, app platforms, we use the apps on the platform itself, we use it on the phone. The data could be used in different contexts that can't be controlled, could be recombined in ways that we cannot foresee. So this whole generativity challenge will be even greater with uh, data platforms. So this leads to also uh, new risks. So what are the new implications of opening up? Can we somehow create design approaches with reflexivity to take into account these risks? How do these implications affect platform openness decisions? So do platform providers actually care about these risks? Do they care about it because it affects their legitimacy? And in the end, do these risks really play a role in decisions about openness? Or is it in the end the business case and the business model that dictates? So to summarize, um, yeah, data platforms should be open to create impact, but there are many tensions. I think data platforms are different than uh, the digital platforms that most uh, openness scholars study. Context is important, the market is fragmented, there are new risks. And I think that interdisciplinary work is needed with people that understand the data, the data economy, the algorithms, the semantics, data processing, and people that understand platform uh, concepts conceptually. And in this way, we are ahead of uh, many interesting questions, I think. Thank you. Open to any questions. <laughs>